Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Exploring Cinema. I'm Nate. Yeah. I'm Dylan. And today it's part two for the Barnes and Noble Criterion Hall. Part uh, two, you say? Yes, part two. Uh, this is mostly because of me. Uh, I, I, you and I went there once. If any, anybody watched the first one, we each went there yeah. once, picked up a handful, a piece. Mm -hmm. That was in early July, and I just kind of couldn't stop going back. I live yeah. very close to a Barnes and Noble with a huge selection and it was very easy to just like swing by on my lunch break and browse. Yeah. Yeah. And that just got me into all kinds of trouble. So <laughs> we're doing a part two, uh, criterion hall from Barnes and Noble for their 50% off sale, which is over now, Yes, but they will have another one later this year. So mm -hmm. anything you picked up that, so I had a lot more than you did, Dylan. So I think yeah. we'll just start with you. Mm -hmm. And instead of going back and forth, um, we'll just kind of, you can do your like three or four that you have. And then I've got 11 Yep, 11. because I have a problem basically. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I didn't want the whole episode to just be you. So uh, I, I chose I appreciate four criterion, that. Yeah, four criterion uh, editions that I got at the last sale uh, before this. So we'll just run through these real quick. First one is Lahane, highly acclaimed French indie movie from 1995 um starring a very young vincent castle yeah guys um and just uh has a little bit of a cult following basically uh the uh it, lahane translates to hate and uh the the plot is 24 hours in the lives of three young men in the french suburbs the day after a violent riot so it's very much all about uh, police and uh, citizens interacting, what leads to riots, lack of trust. Uh, really uh, very interesting movie to watch. Uh, That's not still during, happening. During times of social upheaval. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when uh, when we reach those times, try to remember that. No, um, but yeah, uh, so very good, very uh, entertaining. Um, I was uh, blown away the first time I watched it. It's all in black and white. And so I picked that up. Uh, when yeah, I, I still haven't seen this. And kind of to kind of remind people, you're much more likely to just buy stuff that you've already seen and you yeah. know, and you can confirm that you want a physical copy of it, which yeah. again, I think is honestly the smart way to go. Mm -hmm. I don't think the way that I'm doing this is really the way that a lot of people do it or certainly not the most fiscally responsible way to go. But yeah. I grab a lot of movies that I haven't seen and that I want to see. And this mm -hmm. kind of energizes me to, and inspires me to see these movies. But Lahane is one that I still haven't seen, so I might just have to steal your copy one day and uh, yeah, that'll maybe. watch, or I can watch it with you. Oh yeah, I'd like to watch it with you. Uh, also, before I move on, killer soundtrack from Lahane. Okay, a really great, cool, eclectic, uh, lot. yeah, great soundtrack. All right, moving on to my next one is a film by Kelly Reichert. That is going back, Old Joy. There you go. Yes, there you go, Old Joy uh, from two thousand six. Uh, very low budget, just about two old friends haven't seen each other in a long time. And it's a movie about how friendships can fade with time and kind of that melancholy feeling you have when you see an old friend who, you know, you enjoy spending time with them, but you're not going to like make plans with that. You know, it's two ships passing in the night now at this point. And it's just I haven't seen very many movies that have really tackled that feeling head on and i've started to feel that more as i've gotten older so i just found it to be very fascinating and of course filmed by, by kelly reichert uh with delicate uh you know uh love and beauty for her characters mm -hmm. and settings she's just terrific so had to pick that up to uh yeah 2006 old joy directed by kelly reichert third one is uh directed by uh charles burnett so uh underappreciated uh, african-american director who was around for a long time this is To Sleep With Anger. Great yeah. cover art there, too. Great cover art, yep. Got a Danny Glover in there, and just, yeah. that's When I saw that, I was like, I got to pick this up. Yeah. Um, really kind of interesting. It's a slow burn about uh, a family drama, African-American family that moved uh, up to Chicago, and uh, they kind of have things going well for themselves, and then they're, one of their family members uh, visits, played by Danny Glover. Uh, his name is, I believe, Charlie. Um, that sounds right. Yeah. 
and he uh, is not as godly and moral as the rest of them. And it's kind of about how he kind of in has kind of negative influences on the whole family, starts to tear the family apart. It's a really, I I really loved it. I really connected with the characters. I liked the way it was filmed. It just felt very different to me um, when I saw it. I know, yeah, you, you've seen it once. You didn't like it as much as me, but uh, I'd be willing to uh, definitely give it a rewatch. It's got some cool uh, extras and uh, interview with Burnett and Danny Glover. Um, so Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't resist. And then last but not least... Um, uh, this is for, you know, all the Criterion heads out there. Had to absolutely pick up 1979's Stalker oh, by Tarkovsky. I still really need to see that. Yep. I didn't um, know you had this. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, it was sitting on the shelf last time you were over. Well, excuse um, me. Yeah, yep. you got to pay attention. I, I take a very close note of everything that's on your shelf. when I. Yeah, you want to send me a report of that next week? Yep. <laughs> um. I mean, just listen to this. Andrei Tarkovsky's final Soviet feature is a metaphysical journey through an enigmatic post-apocalyptic landscape, a rarefied cinematic experience like no other. And yeah, really cool kind of sci-fi, heavy concept stuff. It's obviously Tarkovsky, so a lot of dense philosophical discussions. And, you know, it, it's a slow burn, but this movie looks incredible. And it was his final Soviet uh, film. And the tragic backstory is that they filmed a lot of this at old, like, uh, factories that were making, like, nuclear material and stuff from the old leftover places from the Cold War. And a lot of people, including himself, uh, got, like, cancer and stuff shortly after filming this. And it's believed that, like, this movie basically killed him and the lead actor as well. Jesus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no I I'd never heard this story before. Yeah, because it's all it's like the whole concept is that like there's this zone that nobody can go and there's some sort of supernatural thing, but then this guy knows how to get in, so he sneaks two more guys in there. And yeah, they filmed all that stuff in like old Cold War Soviet military facilities that were like abandoned and stuff. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need to watch this movie. So please add to the comments if you know more details if you're listening. I'm just going off the top of my head from what I remember. But yeah, fascinating movie. Uh my favorite Tarkov well, God, hard to pick favorite Tarkovsky movie, but I really like it and I uh yeah, had to pick it up. So I still haven't seen floor. any Tarkovsky movies. So. I know and I and I and I'm I'm thinking in my head what you should start with. Part Maybe like movie. mirror. But Mirror, I actually have not seen, but then Solaris is also so, like, bold. I, and... It's just intimidating to start with one of his, like, three-hour ones. I, well, <laughs> well, someday we're going to have to do uh, the one about... Andre the, Rublev? Uh, Andre Rublev. We're going to have to carve out a weekend to watch Andre Rublev. <laughs> Make sure we have whatever day we're watching it, like, the following day off work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Um, all right. So Locked those are those four hours. Yep, I had uh, Lahane, Old Joy, To Sleep With Anger, and Stalker. Now, over to you, you uh, Criterion addict. <laughs> it, <laughs> that's the last one before we're going to rehab. Right, yeah. <laughs> Don't let me buy any more. Uh -huh. I think for the rest of the year, I'm just going to have to text you every time I want to go to Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm, for sure. And then I yeah. can drive over and take your keys. Right. Or just, I have to go with you, which will make my trips far <laughs> less frequent. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so first one here is uh, my darling Clementine. Damn, what you John just Ford, thought. Henry Fonda, mm -hmm. with just a great picture, like oh, snapshot yeah. from the movie here. This I love this cover. This was a big part of why I grabbed this. Yeah, I'd only seen one John Ford movie before, and that was The Searchers, which I hated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this looked interesting, and I watched it, and I loved it, and it. I still haven't watched the um, the what's the word I'm looking for the commentary. Okay. I've seen all the other specials, which were really interesting and really make the movie a lot cooler. I think okay. so. My darling Clementine. It was fun for me too to actually like a John Ford movie, mm -hmm. just because I'd only seen the one, and he's just such an acclaimed old director. Yeah, and I, I just needed a positive experience with a John Ford movie. So yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely got it with My Darling Clementine. Would highly recommend to pick that up. Mm -hmm. And then I got a new TV, a new 4K TV recently. And so I could not resist adding a little treat on top of that with yeah. Wally, one of my 
favorite Pixar movies, one of my favorite animated movies. Turn it to the side, show how thick it is. Oh God, I know. It's yeah. just got, it, I mean, just for comparison, it, like, yeah, it's, it's got a lot going on in there. I haven't, I haven't opened it yet. I mean, I've taken the like wrappings off, but I haven't really dived into like everything that's in there. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you and I both agree. Wally, -E, just one of their best and uh, really cool to just have a Pixar movie in the collection and all the specials on there just looked fascinating. So mm -hmm. had to grab Wally. -E. And then another one that's pretty thick here, uh, a movie that I have not seen. And I should say I grabbed 11 of these. Three of them I had seen before. Wally -E was one of them. I've since watched My Darling Clementine. But uh, I have not seen this one either, and that is Terrence Malick's The New World. Ooh, yeah. Which the artwork here really grabbed me, uh -huh. and it basically looks like the John Smith story. Yep. But Terrence Malick and not Disney. And yeah. there are like three different versions based on length in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm always one of the people who, like with The Lord of the Rings, I recommend people start with the theatrical release because if you love it, then there's more. Yeah. But if you watch the extended version, and even then, if you love it, it's just like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's, mm -hmm. I like leaving myself a little extra. Yeah. If I love the movie, so I'm. I don't think I'm going to be starting with the like three hour cut. There's, yeah. There's one that's 172 minutes. There's 150 minutes, and there's 135 minutes. Mm. So I don't know which one I'll start with, but it won't be the longest one. But I think that's one that you and I might need to watch together. Yeah. Maybe do an episode for it around when Killers of the Flower Moon comes out. I yeah. should say, too, if anybody, if any movie that we mentioned here today, somebody's interested in us doing an episode on, we mostly do movie reviews and discussions here. So mention that. Mm -hmm. uh, we can easily do any of these. As you can see, we own yes. them now. So, yes. And I, would I, love think, I think a New World episode is probably in our future at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And then this is a movie I haven't seen, but you have, and that is Local Hero. Oh, great cover on that, too. Yeah, this one looks really cool. Oh, and yeah. uh, you really like this movie, so that was one of the reasons that I was drawn to picking it up. The thing that pushed me over the edge, though, was seeing that Peter Capaldi is in this movie. Yeah. And he's just one of the funniest actors ever, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So Local Hero definitely feels like something i'm gonna really like and you've already recommended it to me i have i saw it years ago now at this point but um mm -hmm. yeah i would i would absolutely love to watch that with you i've been meaning to rewatch it and yeah that i mean that cover looks great i'd love to see what kind of features they have yeah so really looking forward to that one and then another movie that i have seen but uh just had to pick up the criterion version of this one and that is double indemnity Ooh. which i believe you have not seen yet. I have not. I have not. And I've been telling you for a while now that uh, if you're looking for a great old, like hard boiled crime movie, uh -huh. it doesn't really get much better than Double Indemnity. Just amazing dialogue. It's a movie that tells you what happened in the first minute. Okay. Yeah. And it's still just gripping all the way through. God. Yeah. That sounds really that. So and cool. this one looks like it has a lot of really cool specials. I like some of the older movies to get for Criterion because they have a lot of, they mm -hmm. sometimes have a lot of uh, like film scholars and old interviews and stuff with just about movies that were, well, I mean, old before we were even born. And this is, you know, written and directed by Billy Wilder. Yeah. Who, uh, he has yet to disappoint me anything that I've Same. seen. Same. So I, yeah, any sort of a uh, bonus features that would be interviews with him or anything like that, I would love to see. Yep. Same. So that's right to the halfway point now. And this is another really good cover, I think. Francis Ford Coppola's Rumblefish. Or did I mention this one last time? You mentioned I this one. I did last mention time. it last time. So we can yeah. move right along. Yeah, right. <laughs> Look at me just doubling up on stuff. Um, so it's only 10 movies then. Uh, and this one I have seen. You've also seen it as well. And I just walked past it enough times. Oh, yeah. That's I, I just movie. had to grab Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite movies of the 2010s. It's mm -hmm. in like my 50 favorite movies of all time at this point, I think. And yeah. uh, just great movie and some interesting looking conversations with the lead actresses and Celine Siama as well. So that's mm -hmm. got to be fascinating. So that yeah. seemed well worth the purchase. Mm -hmm. And then, as you know, I'm a big Hitchcock fan. Yes. As lots of people are. 
Um, I've seen most of his kind of big Hollywood phase, like 50, late 50s, early 60s with Dial M for Murder, uh, Vertigo, Rear Window, To Catch a Thief, mm-hmm. um, Psycho. I'm sure I'm missing oh, one. Yeah right in that stretch you haven't seen the birds i haven't seen the birds and i also have not seen rebecca which is a movie that's really hard to find and it's also his only movie that ever won best picture so this one looks fascinating to me and i mean i do already have uh notorious okay uh with carrie grant and ingrid bergman Mm -hmm. which is Oh, North by Northwest was the other big one that I was forgetting about in that stretch for Hitchcock, which is also my favorite Hitchcock movie. Um, Notorious is maybe my second or third favorite Hitchcock movie, though. And it's right around the same time that he did Rebecca. So yeah, kind of fun to go back to a little earlier, like black and white Hitchcock and and see, see what I get with Rebecca. And then this one I also watched immediately after buying it. And that is De Palma's Blowout. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of this movie. I am now, too, because I watched it like the day after I bought it. Um, Just fantastic movie. Yeah. (laughs) Great. Uh, Nancy Allen is great. Mm -hmm. The ending is very memorable. Uh, John Lithgow. John Lithgow's terrifying. (laughs) So, yeah. I mean, Blowout, really good movie. I'd definitely watch that one again. And then sort of going back to the like really old classic Hollywood and part of this too, the cover art's like half of what got me here. This is a Howard Hawks movie from 1939 Mm. called Only Angels Have Wings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very old school. Yeah. With Cary Grant and Gene Arthur. Yeah. And I, I mean, this is just the cover art's amazing. This is uh, Cary Grant plays Jeff Carter, uh, who's head of a crumbling air freight service in desperate need of a replacement pilot. Uh, He is forced to hire a discredited aviator who arrives with his wife, Carter's ex-lover. Meanwhile, traveler Bonnie Lee tries to get close to the emotionally closed off Carter. It's got Cary Grant in it, though, and it's got really good reviews on Letterboxd, so I'm probably going to love it Uh because I like pretty much everything that Cary Grant is in that I've seen. Yeah. So really looking forward to getting to that one. And then last but not least, and this is one that I feel like I need to watch with you. So this Uh might be like a weekend or like a whole Saturday kind of thing. But Mm -hmm. this is Carlos. Oh, yes. Uh, Yeah, we we definitely need to to carve out some time to watch that. Yeah, from Olivier Assize, if I'm pronouncing that remotely correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, This, it's long. I mean, it's listed 339 minutes yeah i don't know if it's split into like episodes i think it is but i'm not 100 percent sure okay. so i mean that's something we'll find out as we dive in but uh this is the story of venezuelan revolutionary illich ramirez sanchez who founded a worldwide terrorist organization and raided the opec headquarters in 1975 before being caught by the french police and Asize did uh, Irma Vep, which I love. I think that's a fantastic mm. movie. I think that's all of his stuff that I've seen. And Carlos just felt right up our alley. Mm-hmm. So I saw that one and just needed to grab that as well. So, yeah, I'm excited. So there you go. It. Between, yeah, between Carlos and uh, Andre Rublev. <laughs> and New World. <laughs> and New World. Yeah, yeah. those three movies. We got some long long movies slash miniseries to watch here, Dylan. Yeah, yeah. That's a three-day weekend right there. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I guess we'll we'll have to do another one next time a Criterion sale comes along. Um, Yeah, if they do one of their highly addicting, like, 24 or 48-hour flash sales. Yep, absolutely. Where you need to, like, remind yourself that this will happen again, so you don't need to buy everything in the damn store. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, if you're uh, if you're watching this, uh, feel free to, like we said, comment uh, if there's one in particular that you'd love for us to maybe do an episode on uh, any excuse to watch any of these and do an episode on. I think we're looking for. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Points in the right direction. Uh, we are all for that. And I believe it is my turn to put a wrap on the show. You got a quote. So do I. Oh, all right. OK, well, you go. Then you go. You got it. Uh, this yeah. is your. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of your I- episode. So I will let you uh, put a wrap on the show. Nate. 
I killed him for money and a woman. And I didn't get the money, and I didn't get the woman.